everyone. Well, who the funk, huh? We've got roots growing on the Dendrobium nobili variety Cooksonianum, which I got as a gift from Fernanda Nascimento orchids and succulents. And I was quite happy to keep it in bark until such a time that spring comes around with new growth and new roots, etc. I just can't help myself. When I see new roots growing, I need to get in there because I don't want these new roots to attach to any kind of bark. And yeah, so I'm gonna repot this. I'm gonna transition this nobly into leca and pumice, but I'll explain that later, even though it is November. The orchid itself is also starting to drop the leaves. So I'm in a little bit of a conundrum here, but I'm gonna go with what the roots are telling me and I'm going to repot her anyway. I do have a half functioning hand now. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna take this project on board, even though, you know, I'm not quite confident with my grip yet, but I'm not going to wait. And uh, oof, look at this. Since it has been with me in this pot when we did the five-way repot, that root is coming out of the holes. I may lose it because I can't cut this pot. It's one of those really tough ones. So let's have a look, see if we can fandangle that one root out. Let's just see. The reason I don't like my roots, you see, ugh. The reason I don't like my roots to be long like this already is because they are much more sensitive. And is this gonna come off? Right, oh dear. Uh, oh, their roots are everywhere. No, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm just seeing that this is going to be, oh, it's a good time for me to do this, but I, oh, you don't want to compromise on your root tip ever. Oh, come on. I can't believe this. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Let's see. And then with a dodgy grip, I wonder, please. Oh, <laughs> I hope that wasn't shot. I wasn't even looking. I was just like, no. <laughs> I want to get all this bark out as much as possible. This has just been a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful time with this orchid while it's been with me. Not that long. And it's just going mental. You see, if, if the bark doesn't come off these roots here, oh, I am in a pickle. I am in a pickle. A good pickle. <laughs> no complaints about new roots, no complaints, but ooh, it makes the job just a, that much more. You see, there's roots growing everywhere. Just makes the job a little bit more um, nerve wracking. If we're gonna have collateral damage, then it might as well be some older roots. Let's see if I can get some of that bark out there from the middle. Okay, the stem is down there. Oh, is this a climber? What is this? There's a stem right down here. Can you see it? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. Filming helps me stay focused. Helps me to do the job correctly. Instead of cutting corners, you don't want to be showing some bad habits. <clears throat> so I have soaked this root ball for about two hours because it is in bark. I wouldn't need to do it that long if it were in leca. But because it is in bark, and the bark that I used was brand new. So in order to get some of the bark a little bit softer and easier to take off, it was a two hour soak. Um, yeah. Trying to stay way away from root tips. But you see, there is quite a lot of bark in here. As it's going to go into a very wet environment, I do want to get, let's say, 80% of the bark out. Really also trying to work with a hand that is a little bit um, dodgy. So I'm hoping that my snippers will be the substitute to that. 
what I normally do with my hands. I'm going to try and use the snippers. Oops, collateral damage. We lost a root tip. Look at that. Ooh. But yeah. Now you can say, well, why don't you just wait? Next year, there's always that time of year. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> when I see new roots and I think, okay, time of year, we can wait. It's got fresh bark around it. But I'm also anticipating rain. Now, I know I've been down that road before, so we just broke that vellum in so we can snip that off. I've been down the road with rain coming before and uh, the forecast was wrong and it came down elsewhere and not necessarily on my patio. So I've been there before, but it's that time of year that it's possible that it's actually the right forecast. These roots, I just want to double check if they're viable. They look brown, they're old. I think they're going to go once I have them in leca and pumice. So I'm going to be quite radical. If you're squeamish about cutting away roots that look viable, please look away. But in order to get in and understand what the stem is here, because this is going into a very wet environment and I don't want anything to start rotting on me, especially starting with the colder months of the year. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to really be more drastic than I was thinking I was going to be when I'm preparing this for a transition. I'm going to take out all the roots that look like this. They are somewhat soft to the touch, but the snips still make a sound when I cut it, but they're soft. So yeah, all the ones that are this color are coming off. So I have a root growing through a piece of bark here, coming out the other end. I'm going to try and use my snips to break that bark up around the root and see if I can't release it that way. It's already too bruised, so I'll take it back to the crack. There's a root tip there. These are all pretty solid right on the roots. I don't like to interfere with those. See that? There we go. This is about as much as I'm comfortable with fiddling around. I love seeing all these little like embryo branchings here and I would really like to maintain those and they are all over the place. You see that? They're all over the place. So I'm just going to leave it as it is right now. I'm not going to mess around too much, but I am worried about this and you know what it is? This nobody was propagated by an old cane. This is the old remnant of the cane, which was then cut once the orchid started to grow a growth, two growths, three growths, and the cane was never taken off. So that's what this is. I don't want it in the pot. 
this could rot on me. So I do kinda want to get in there and take it off at least up to a certain part. Let's see how my little secateurs handle. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> it wasn't as tough as I thought. I mean, it is dried up, but it's dried up because of how it was potted up. My media is going to be wet. And um, even though it's been dried up, doesn't mean that that's not going to start rotting in my pot. So I've gotten to this point right here. Now I'd like to get up to the top if I can. Oh, I can. While I was cleaning up, I thought, mm, this is going to be difficult, but it's not. Ta -da! That was pretty straightforward. All right, let's get this potted up. And the bark that is on there will stay on there. And then we shall see how it fares, because as the rains come, rainwater, you know, the elixir from above, depends on how much rain we get. I have to be super, super vigilant as to the quantity, longevity, the, how long the rain is going to last, because we are expecting acid rain because of the volcano and it hasn't rained in yonks. So yeah, those are the things that I have to monitor in the coming week. But in the meantime, let's get this potted up. And if there is plenty of rain, then we've even got that timing right, which would be perfect. Right, so why am I going to be using pumice? Well, I have it. But also, I don't want to be using too much of my small Lekka. This is a very thirsty orchid when she gets going. She is much bigger than the nobly that I currently have in my collection, the only nobly that I have. It's like half the size of this one. But large Lekka alone will not do the trick here. It's too dry in my climate. I know it sounds counterproductive when considering self-watering, but it is actually too dry when an orchid that gets going as vigorous as this one, and it's only in large Lekka. There would be far too much watering for me to do. So what I'm going to do is crock the bottom with very large Lekka, and then I'm going to use pumice in between and see how far we get but pumice is gonna go around the root ball because pumice is also much, much more water retentive and that should help me. It's airy, water retentive. Now I'm just checking the direction of growth. I know we have a front and back, but I'm gonna put this one more into the middle. Nobilies are not necessarily one direction of growth all the time. So yeah, I'm liking this. I'm not going to fiddle around with positioning any of the roots. I'm just going to fill up with pumice around the root ball and see how that goes. If I need to add more water, if the water in my pot doesn't rise with the content that I'm putting in, then I shall be adding more water so that my pumice can disperse evenly around the roots inside. And if there are air gaps, I'm not bothered either. I don't need to have every single root touching the pumice because the previous setup was not like that. So this is already almost like if you want to go there, but it's like 400% more water retentive than what this orchid has ever been used to. So a couple of air pockets here and there between the roots really, really is not that big a deal at all because it knows air pockets. <laughs> this is something it doesn't know. So here we go. Let's keep those roots a little bit more free of media so that they can literally grow in. And let's make sure the back is also not going to impede those new root tips. There we go. I'm kind of liking the look of this. Don't want to shake it too much. There's so much going on in this pot regarding root growth. I think I'm just going to leave it like this. And I'm leaving myself enough space as well around the top so that I can always fill up with either large lecker or more pumice. But for the time being, I want the roots to find their way into the pot and not have so much media to climb around or search their way through. I just need to stake it in the back. It is rather wobbly. And in this way, I've saved myself a lot of small lecker. This is a 20 centimeter pot small lecker in here is just going to consume a lot of the stash that I have. I really don't want to be buying anything in anymore. So I'm using what I have and I'm hoping that this, well, hoping, 
I'm pretty sure this orchid is gonna love it come spring. And in the meantime, I've got enough roots growing to at least get adapted to this environment throughout the winter. I have never seen a nobly grow new roots while at the same time going into a winter rest. That's a first for me. I was happy to just leave it be. yippee i winter rest. It'll wake up and, you know, be in a new environment and then pot it up in a new media. So I'm very, no, I wasn't expecting this one bit. But here we are, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna feel a little, little bit better. I have been pHing this orchid at 6.5 away from what I normally do for the rest of my orchids because of the bark. At least now I can pH this one, the same as with the others, because yes, I'm gonna continue fertilizing. Those roots need to grow. And I'm gonna push them as far as I can, as best as I can, for as long as need be, and if I forfeit blooms in the spring, then so be it. For me, roots are always the thing. I love the blooms, but let me tell you, if I see roots and something needs to be done, I will do it based on roots. So I'm trying to get my <laughs> support here done properly while I'm watching the root tips down there. I don't want to be jiggling so much. And that's why it keeps slipping, and uh, that's why I just don't like working with gloves. I don't have the right feel, uh, yeah. But anyway, we've done it. So that's all it really needs. Still a bit wobbly, huh? But another stake is not gonna change anything. So I won't put it in as windy a space as it has been. It'll go a little bit more protected, but yeah. So this is a little bit of a, not different, but you know, adjusting based on what is available and Adjusting according to the orchid, roots, nobly in the winter while going deciduous. Yep, that's new for me. But here we are, it's done and I'm happy for it. I'm really, really pleased to get that out of the way. My pHing has suddenly become a tad less complicated. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this repot. I appreciate your time, your company. Again, you keep me focused. If I was doing this on my own, I probably would be like chop, chop, chop a little bit too much, but this keeps me on track. So thank you ever so much for being here. Please, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to use the comments section. It is there for a reason. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though. Please, please stay safe and take care. Bye.